get started, let me know in the chat how many of you have used an air fryer or thinking about it, have been intrigued, and uh, maybe you're well experienced. Let us know in the chat. I always like to see uh, where everyone is coming from. All right, perfect. Intrigued, absolutely, absolutely. We've seen a lot of a lot of press on the air fryer recently. Oh, perfect. Peg has one. All right, French fries, excellent. Great. Let's see what else we have. All right, Elise has, oh, a Cuisinart one. Very nice. Awesome. All right, let's see what else we have. All right, well, I think we're sold. It sounds like everyone that has an air fryer right now is in love with it and are pretty much sold on the product. So if this is something new for you today, well, welcome. I hope this provides some inspiration uh, to help with your intrigue and may help you decide, hey, I want to purchase that gadget. If you already have one, we'll talk about some easy things that you can do for recipes and just some considerations when using your air fryer. New to me, excellent, excellent. And I believe the air fryer was new for a lot of people in the last few years. I know the first time I heard the term air fryer, I thought, that can't be right. How can you fry with air? But we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So perfect, thanks everyone for chiming in. So what is an air fryer? So the first time I heard this term, was probably about three years ago. I think it was, you know, right before the start of the COVID epidemic. And when I thought, how can you fry with air? But really, when we think about an air fryer, uh, it, it really is, think about a mini convection oven that can sit on your countertop. That's really what an air fryer is all about here. And so you can see from this photo is that really it's high circulation uh, of air that's going to spin around your food very, very quickly at an elevated temperature. And because it's a smaller amount of space, that item can cook very, very quickly. And because it's circulating, it creates that crispiness on the outside that we associate with frying, but also leaves a nice tender inside of your different products. And the great thing about an air fryer is that you can choose to use a little bit of oil in your cooking, maybe spritz a little bit of olive oil, your favorite cooking oil, or you can choose to put items into your air fryer with no oil at all. There's lots of different ways and really no wrong way when it comes to your cooking. So really when you think about an air fryer, just a small convenient oven on your countertop. And the question that we get frequently, is it healthy? Well, when we think about frying our food, oftentimes it's submerged in oil. We might be using a good amount of cooking oil, whether we're you know, cooking in a pan, or if you think about a restaurant, dipping that food into the oil. And so we know, you know about each tablespoon of oil can have over 100 calories, 10 plus grams of fat, and that adds up really quickly. If we take that same product and transfer it to a different device and even just use a small amount of cooking oil or none at all, we're drastically going to lower though that total added fat and calories. So a really, it is a nice, easy way to cook some of our favorite options. Now, we want to make sure what we're putting into the air fryer is also healthy as well. So if we're doing things like lean proteins, meat, vegetables, those are wonderful nutritious options. If we're putting in things that are maybe are convenient or frozen, then that health quality might vary a little bit depending on what that product is. But overall, if you compare to the original cooking practice, it's going to be a little bit less uh, lower in fat and calories. And what I love about the air fryer, and it sounded like we had a lot of positive feedback in the chat, is that you can make some incredibly tasty vegetables in no time. And one of the many things that I hear uh, from customers over the years is, you know, I know I need to eat my vegetables, but I can't really... I don't know how to cook them. I, I just, they're, they're not appealing. And putting them into the air fryer is a great way to transform your vegetables. And that's one of my favorite ways uh, to, uh, one of my favorite food items to cook in the air fryer. Oh, and it looks like someone, here, oh, we were just talking about this before the presentation. You have an LG stove that has the air fryer option. Very, very cool. So it's built right in. Wonderful, wonderful. 
And so when we think about an air fryer, you've probably seen commercials, social media posts, advertisements. Maybe you were shopping in a department store and you saw uh, a display of them. It's really intriguing. There's a lot of different gadgets that are out there. And truly, it's up to you on what works best for your family. And it sounds like many of us already that already mentioned in the chat that you have um, see, let's see, uh, let's, so actually I'm going through the chat. Someone has a Cuisinart. Perfect. There's lots of different options. And I did see, and I missed this. Someone has the air fryer lid for the instant pot. So yes, air frying can come in a variety of different ways. Perfect. Yes. So the countertop, uh, air fryer saves electricity and money. Absolutely. So when we think about air frying, this is another convenient gadget that you can use in your cooking. And so depending on what our preferences are for how much time we want to spend our level of cooking ability, uh, and if we want to save time and money and energy, these are great options. So there's lots of different uh, goodies here on the screen. You can see that we have some of these smaller basket air fryers, which is actually what I'm most familiar with. This is something that I have in my kitchen. And so depending on the number of people or the number of people in your household that you'll be cooking for, or what you'd like to cook in your air fryer, there's lots of different sizes. Often they're listed in quart sizes. So it might be three quarts or six quarts. And so these smaller basket uh, style ones are also a great option for someone that wants to make a quick meal and not have to turn on the oven. So maybe you're cooking for yourself or someone else. You can just put in one or two servings and they're good to go. Oh, perfect. And it looks like here, oh, it looks like Janet's air fryer is also a convection oven and a toaster. Okay, wonderful. And that actually takes us to our other type of air fryer. So down here, you can see that we have sort of this oven air fryer, which is a multi-purpose machine. It sort of looks like a toaster oven, so to speak. And so as we've seen the popularity of air fryers grow exponentially, especially during our COVID uh, time when we were at home, there's lots of different gadgets that are available. So if you'd like to have a multi-purpose machine, you might wanna consider getting something that looks more like a toaster oven or an oven air fryer. You can also roast or bake in these as well too. And it sounds like every we've got a nice array of uh, different gadgets uh, um, in our kitchens from the group. So there's lots of different options. We also have one on over here that I'll point out. It's called a paddle air fryer. So oftentimes when we put product into the basket here, we often have to stop midway through the cooking process, shake the basket to make sure that all of that product's getting airflow at the same time or at the same level. And so sometimes the items in the middle might be a little colder than the items on the outside. So we have to shake it up. Well, this paddle air fryer here that I've circled actually spins the items for you so you don't have to. So again, there are lots of options when it comes to your air fryer. Again, how many people do you wanna cook for? Do you wanna try experimenting? Do you wanna roast a chicken? Do you want to cook uh, uh, baked goods in your air fryer? All of those capabilities are possible depending on the size of the basket or the device that you have. So wonderful. So lots of things to choose from. And again, this can take a little bit of research to find that one that works for you. But one thing that's great as the summer temperatures are heating up, these air fryers are wonderful because we don't have to turn the oven on. So someone mentioned French fries that we have here on the screen. They like cooking them. Or if I want to make some vegetables, I can easily turn, put, use my air fryer and turn that on and avoid having to turn my oven on as well. And that keeps that heat uh, from increasing in my kitchen. Great. And the versatility. So over the last few years, really, again, the rise in the popularity of air, uh, of air fryers has boomed because people were cooking at home. They know that they want to find items or cook items that are better for them. And this is a multi-purpose machine. So you can cook almost anything. So let me know in the chat, what are some of your favorite go-to items that you like to use your air fryer for? We heard, air, uh, we heard uh, uh, let's see, French fries, uh, vegetables are great options. You can even, and I know this is hard to believe, you can cook 
eggs. You can make hard boiled eggs in your air fryer. You can pop popcorn. You can even make pizza. Let's see here, chicken. Let's see, sweet potato fries, a game changer. Absolutely, absolutely. Now you can even try different things like your lean proteins, chicken, fish, and even tofu as well. And again, you can spritz on a little bit of cooking oil or none at all, depending on your preference. And like I mentioned earlier, depending on the size and the type of air fryer that you have, you could also make some portion controlled uh, baked goods as well. So the air fryer that I have, unfortunately, is just a little too small for a pan. But if you have one that's a larger quart size, then that would be a great option for the summertime if you wanted to have a little treat. And also, too, another thing that you can use your air fryer for if we have any popcorn fans, you can actually pop popcorn in your air fryer. So if you're looking for a tasty snack, uh, then you are good to go with that. Oh, and Catherine, that's a great question. Can you put oil in the bottom of your air fryer? Well, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you coat everything in the, in the, in the pan or the bucket, um, and that way everything's easily dispersed. Now, often we can have grates at the bottom of our air fryer, and some of that grease can actually drip down into the heating element and cause oh, a little smokiness. So you definitely want to make sure that your items are coated uh, throughout the product rather than at the bottom. Oh, great. And so it looks like uh, Janet has cooked, let's see here, uh, pizza, chicken wings, ribs, salmon. Absolutely. And I'm sure that uh, it all turned out really great. Uh, let's see, can you cook frozen asparagus in the air fryer? Yes, you actually can. You can cook frozen asparagus, frozen vegetables, absolutely. And when they're frozen, that might increase the amount of moisture that's, that's uh, in that uh, canister. So they might increase the cooking time a little bit, but yes, you can. Yes, when you cook it in the microwave bag, it gets wilted and gets a little bit soggy. So yes, you can definitely try that. And then let's see, Janet says she uses spray oils. Absolutely. If you want to have just a little bit of crispiness, a little bit of flavor, but again, not going overboard, those spray oils are a great option. Now, other things that are fun that you can add, even roasting your favorite beans. So over here on the far right, we have roasted garbanzo beans. And so these are great if you're looking for a crunchy snack like the popcorn, but also a little bit of flavor and a little bit of crunch. And the great thing is that anytime that we can make something at home from scratch with a few ingredients, that's going to save us money in the long run, but also help control the fat, the sodium, uh, and other ingredients and in some of those ready-made products too. So lots of ways. And again, I know oftentimes there might be a little bit of trial and error when it comes to cooking your favorite items in the air fryer, but there are lots of resources available and we'll talk about those in the next couple of slides. Oh, perfect. You also use it for uh, store-bought ro uh, roast chicken, healthy and crispy. Absolutely. So there's really no wrong way. A great thing about the air fryer too is you can heat up leftovers. So maybe you make something in uh, the oven for the previous night. You can take those leftovers, put it into your device and have it cooked within just a few minutes. So really very, very versatile and also brings an element of creativity into the kitchen. Oh, let's see here. Oh, you don't have a manual. Well, actually, if you have a device or an air fryer, uh, you know, if you ever have any questions, you can always go to that manufacturer's website and they'll have that uh, PDF of your manual. So if you ever have questions about what you should or shouldn't put into the air fryer, you can always re re uh, use that as a reference too. Um, and, you know, tips and tricks as well. There's lots of information that's available online. Now, when you're looking for cooking inspiration, there are lots of ways to find yummy items in the store uh, or you know, online. And so a few things that you can utilize if you're looking for new recipes or new ideas that you can uh, use your air fryer for. So of course, our savory magazine, and I'll actually highlight a couple of recipes in the next slide. So a great resource that you can utilize, you can pick up the Giant Savory Magazine in store or you can pick it up, you can uh, check it out online, the digital copy. 
Now, there are a lot of air frying fanatics out there. And so if you like to spend a little bit of time on social media or surfing different websites, Air Fryer World is another great website, along with Air Fryer Fanatics. And one of my favorite cookbooks is cookinglight.com. Lots of fun recipes that are air fryer inspired, and that way they're made for your device. Let's see. Perfect, perfect. And uh, another question that came in, how do you clean an air fryer? Well, you know, there's a few different ways that you can do it. Many of the different devices are air, are dishwasher safe. So you can put that basket into your dishwasher. You might have to lightly scrub it if there's any caked on food or any excess oil, or you can hand wash it in the sink as well too, whatever you prefer. Uh, when in doubt, you can always check that manufacturer booklet just to see what they recommend. But once your product has cooled down, you can easily uh, clean it before it, it sticks to the, the pan and then you'll be good to go. So lots of things that you can do to make that cleanup super, super easy. And so here are some great options. If you're look, thinking about like, what can I make? What are some things I can mix it up a little bit? So we already had a fan of the air fryer sweet potatoes. So this is a great recipe that you can find at Savory's on uh, Savory's website at giantfood.com. So quick uh, sweet potato fries, you can make these from scratch or you can buy the frozen ones as well. Another great item that you can make in your air fryer, one of my favorites is tofu. So if you're looking for maybe a lighter recipe this summer, you can uh, try the crispy tofu, uh, a super, super easy way to get a wonderful protein source. You just press out all that water. You can add a little bit of your favorite oil or seasonings, just put it right into the air fryer. In about you know 10 or 15 minutes, your product is done. Now, other things too, maybe we want to make a better for us chicken sandwich. Maybe we're having a barbecue or get together with friends or family and uh, chicken sandwiches are popular. We can make our own at home. And then also another popular food item that many people use their air fryer for are Brussels sprouts. And so this is a great way to get that crunchy crispiness that comes out when we cook at those high temperatures. Uh, let's see here. And Peg just posted a question. Air fryer filters. They look like uh, large coffee filters on Amazon. Actually, I have not seen these, but I will do some Googling to find out. And it helps with cleanup. Perfect. So does it sort of pull all of the remnants and sort of the, uh, the elements from the, from the product? I learn something new every, every, every day. Perfect. Helps with cleanup. Excellent. And also one of the things I also wanted to mention is there are lots of different uh, of options when it comes to the ease of cleaning the devices. So some of the air fryers actually have a Teflon coated basket, but there are also others that have stainless steel or ceramic. And so depending on the coating that yours has, it might involve a slightly different cleanup method. Oh, perfect, perfect. All right. So a couple of cooking tips. Now, I'm sure many of you uh, that have uh, air, air fryers at home, maybe you've had some trial and error when it comes to cooking. I know for me, I, I've been in that predicament a few times. Now, one of the things that we can do is making sure that we preheat our air fryer. Just like we preheat our oven, we want to make sure that we bring it up to temperature and that way it'll cook that product much, much faster and you don't have to wait for that temperature to rise. Now, one area, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I just saw the, the chat come in, perfect. Now, one thing that I know I have to remind my family members of is to not overfill the basket. I know many times if we have a smaller air fryer, we might wanna try to get in as much of that product as possible so we don't have to run it twice. But we wanna make sure that we leave some room in that basket to allow that air to circulate both on the outside and through the inside so it's nice, evenly coated. And then you can see here, these are actually roasted Brussels sprouts that I made at home. You can see that the outside gets that crispy coating, but then it's also nice and soft and chewy in the middle. And so it's a nice combination. It really does enhance the flavor. 
And also too, remember that you want to shake your item. Uh, if you don't have an air fryer that automatically rotates the food, just want to make sure that you uh, stop any, if you're cooking for about 15 minutes, you can stop about every five minutes, open up the drawer and just shake it. And then that way everything is nicely coated. Now, a few other things we want to be careful of when we're thinking about using the air fryer. We don't want to use any kind of wax paper that can melt uh, and cause quite the cleanup. Uh, anything that can melt, I would refrain from using. Absolutely. And then we want to make sure that you pull it away from the wall. There's a lot of heat that is coming out of that device. So if you have anything that's sitting on your kitchen counter, maybe you have some uh, a container of spoons to the left or the right of your air fryer, you want to make sure just move those out of the way, move that um, device out on the counter a little bit to allow that air to disperse. And that way it minimizes the risk of anything in the area melting a little bit as well. <laughs> Yes, and actually, thank you, Janet. Uh, that's a great reminder. Now, there are many things that maybe we shouldn't put into the air fryer. And oftentimes, anything that has additional grease, if we're cooking meats, maybe steak or burgers that have a higher fat content, that grease can drip down and cause a little bit of smoking in your house and maybe set off those fire alarms as well. I know my smoke detector has gone off a few times. So a lesson learned there. Also, you can see here, and I'll point out, at the bottom of the air fryer, we have these small grates. So depending on your device, if you're thinking about putting something into your air fryer, you want to make sure that it's larger than the holes of those grates. So for instance, this is my home air fryer. I may not want to put peas or very uh, dice, uh, small diced pieces of vegetables because that could fall down into that heating element, maybe cause some damage or cause some smoking as well. So generally you want to think about really about the size of a nickel or larger when it comes to putting things into the air fryer. Perfect. Yes, always use your oven fan. And actually, that's a great idea. You can actually move your air fryer. You can sit it on top of your stove or right next to it and turn off that or turn on that exhaust fan and help kind of pull those fumes out. Plus, it'll help keep your kitchen a little bit cooler. Now, other things that we might want to think twice about putting into the air fryer, cheese that can often cause a bit of a melty mess. So if you have anything, uh, like if you're making cheeseburgers, you may wanna put that cheese on after the item is cooked uh, and just have it melt on that cooked meat. Now, other things, maybe we're thinking about making uh, kale chips. Leafy greens often will fly around the device and so may not be cooked to their proper level and they can also get caught into the heating element. So anything that's real light, we may want to cook in the oven as well, or instead I should say. So just some considerations when it comes to uh, cooking your items. Now you might be using a recipe that maybe is following or it's for a conventional oven. And so what you can do is you can reduce the temperature by about 25 degrees if you'd like to figure out the ideal cooking temperature. So maybe if your recipe calls for 350, you can change that to 325, and then you can reduce the cooking time by about 20%. So maybe you just knock off about five or six minutes, depending on that cooking time. And you know, when in doubt, check that cooking manual and it'll give you the recommended uh, cooking uh, temperature and the time to make sure that it's well done. Now, when in doubt, anytime that you're using your air fryer, you're cooking raw meats, or anything that needs to cook to uh, an optimal temperature, just pull out that uh, meat thermometer and get that internal temperature just to make sure that it's at the right level, just to kind of minimize any kind of foodborne illness that could occur with improper uh, cooking temps. Perfect, perfect. Now, anyone else, have you tried or had any uh, experience or do you have any recommendations for the group on what's worked and what hasn't worked in your air fryer? Let me know, you can feel free to put it into the chat. Perfect. Helps with cleanup. Excellent. Excellent as well. Perfect. And really some reasons to love it. So if you're intrigued, you've been thinking about the air fryer, been sort of weighing the pros and the cons, here are some wonderful reasons why everyone loves it uh, that owns one. It's very versatile. Uh, there's, uh, you know, you can have a wonderful cooked item that's a restaurant quality from your own 
kitchen, which is really, really nice. And of course, minimal mess. Who wants to spend more time cooking uh, in the uh, kitchen if you don't have to? You can put everything into the air fryer and then all you have to do is rinse the pan when you're done. And also really, really quick and convenient. I love to do roasted vegetables. I love to put them in the oven, but that can often take about 45 minutes to my level of doneness, so to speak, or crispiness. So I can use my air fryer and cut that time in half or less too. So it's very quick. If I'm short on time, I can just use the air fryer, pop it in, and I'm ready to go. And this is also great if you have any children, grandchildren at home, maybe they're home for the summer. An air fryer is a really easy gadget where they can make things. You don't have to worry about turning the oven on. And it's just very, very convenient, especially for those, uh, those kids that are learning how to cook. And then it was also mentioned earlier, you know, energy efficiency. Yeah, I'm just using a small device for a few minutes. That's actually going to help me with my energy use in my home as well. So lots of reasons to love it. There's lots of options that are out there, all different for everyone. Let's see. Um, and any brand recommendations from Lori? Gosh, you know, there is there's uh, lots of different options available when it comes to uh, brands. I know someone mentioned Cuisinart, LG. One of the, if you're looking for uh, recommendations, a great uh, resource that I love to use is Consumer Reports. They have tested lots of different air fryers. Uh, there's also lots of other websites that test and compare air fryers to uh, you know, the pros and the cons of each device. So check those out to see which one you think would be the best for you. There are lots of different options. Oh, let's see here. So uh, Peg. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, there's lots of experimenting when it comes to using different products, whether it's frozen or fresh. Um, you put them, you put the chicken nuggets on the sheet pan. Perfect. Yeah. Lots of different ways. Oh, and actually that is a great question uh, that we can cover at the end. If you're able to access consumer reports at database through your library. Good question. I hope so. <laughs> great. And before we wrap up and I can take any additional questions. Oh, perfect. You do have access. Excellent. Wonderful. Just a little bit more about what we provide at Giant. Our healthy living team, really our goal is to make healthy living easy, fun, and realistic. And so our team, we provide a variety of free resources uh, virtually or in stores. So if you have any particular questions or needs uh, about your cooking style, maybe it's meal planning or cooking for your, uh, you know, your different disease states you might be managing, you can definitely reach out to us. You can actually take your cell phone. You can turn it on the camera and scan this QR code, and that'll take you right to our website on how to get more information to schedule a consultation or take an online class. Um, and then we also have our Healthy Living by Giant Facebook group. So this is a fun way to get some inspiration on all things healthy living. I'm always amazed at what my colleagues come up with. Lots of inspiration for the summer. Again, easy, quick meals that don't take a lot of time, new products in store, you name it. And then also we have our Healthy Living by Giant podcast. So another great resource, a library database of information we have over 100 episodes available. So you can check that out online at giantfood.com. Or again, you can scan that QR code. You can also listen on your favorite podcast app. So lots of things at your fingertips. Perfect. Oh, let's see here. There's a couple of things that also came in. Oh, actually, so Kristen said that she used air fryer to dehydrate veggies for dog treats. That is an excellent idea. Thank you for sharing that. I am always looking for better for you options for my pups. So I'm going to use that as a nice little crunchy snack for them instead of all those dog bones. Great. Uh, let's see here, Peg. Oh, if you want to reheat a rotisserie chicken uh, that you picked up at the store, uh, ideally you want to reheat the item to an internal temperature of 135 degrees. Oh, Janet has it. Perfect. 350 for 10 to 15 minutes. Perfect. 
Yeah. And then that should bring that up to that internal temperature. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, depending on the size of your fryer, if you want to cut it into smaller pieces, uh, really whatever fits best, it'll allow that air to flow. Perfect. All right. Great. Excellent. Well, I love seeing the feedback and the recommendations and the tips and tricks and other ways that you're using your air fryers. This is great. The internal temperature, if it's already cooked, should be 135 degrees, um, if I'm not mistaken. Perfect. Yeah, so if you have that roast chicken, you could have a nice meal in just a few minutes. And again, the ease and convenience. And that's one of the other great things when it comes to you know, cooking at home. This is a great device where it doesn't take a whole lot of prep time. You can have a great tasting meal, but it's very flavorful, but again, better for you. And again, that restaurant quality, so perfect. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate everyone's time this afternoon for this short presentation. I hope this has given you some inspiration and some ideas on how to use your air fryer. Or maybe this has helped maybe inspire you to try one out in your home. Um, if you have any particular questions, I'm going to put into the chat our email address. If there's anything else that I can assist for you. Uh, let's see here. If you have any questions, it's healthy living at Giant Food. Uh, let's see here. And for Susan, I see. I would say if you're looking for a smaller device, like a three quart uh, air fryer would be a good size if you're cooking for one. They come in a variety of different sizes. Generally, it's about a quart uh, per serving. Um, so the smaller ones generally run about two to three quarts. Yeah, so lots of different options. And again, lots of different price points as well, depending on uh, you know, what you're looking for and what meets your needs as well. So there's truly something for everyone. And I'm quite jealous of, whoop, let's see, who had the fancy stove? I'm quite jealous on, on that extra uh, feature for the uh, air frying. Next time I buy a new stove, I will be uh, looking for that. <laughs> oh, I want to scoot ahead here. Well, let's see here. Great. Uh, well, thank you so much, Peg, Susan. I thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Any other last questions? I'm happy to answer anything on today's topic. Or if there's anything else that's come to mind, you can feel free to let me know. Uh, Janet has an air fryer, convention oven, uh, convection oven, and a toaster. Oh, now you're talking. There isn't anything that you can't cook. Oh, let's see here. And there was another question about the parchment paper. The parchment paper, I would be cautious of just because it can melt and we just don't want anything to stick to that device or maybe fall into that heating element. So I would be, I would be careful with the parchment paper. Great question. Great question. Uh, well, thank you so much. All right.